Like oh, look, it's seventh year for the game. Uh, the club has raised about a quarter of a million dollars for breast cancer. Um, so, a great cause. I just hope we can reverse the result from last year. Uh, any links with you and family that you're able to touch on, or if there is anything? Oh, Craig, when you get to my age, you're going to have you no know, people that have been affected, so for sure. What is it? Does it? I mean, obviously, this club with Trevor Gleeson and what went through with Dawn. Um, does it? Does it hit home and on a personal level? As you say, you know, when you get a little bit older and there's a lot of people in your family and wider network, does it have a significant personal, um, I guess, significance? I think the great thing is the awareness that it brings. Uh, like we had Patrick come and speak to our group yesterday, a male. So when you think about breast cancer, you just think it's usually female, um, but about 200 males a year in this, in this country are affected. So I thought that was a great message to talk to our athletes about that. So they understood like, it, we're, we're all not bulletproof, you know? You sense a different energy from the playing group when this round comes around? It's a great cause but they're professional athletes that get an opportunity to play at a high level for 28 games. So as a club, we really like to support this cause, but I would hope the athletes come out with the same energy every game. Sunday's result, what was the most disappointing element for you and how do you go about turning that around tomorrow night? Yeah, uh, the way I look at it is our first quarter. Uh, we got off to a great start, but we did not maintain the level to open the game up. Uh, my own belief is there's a part of the game where you can open it up to your advantage or if you're behind, there's a chance to capitalize and get yourself back in the game. We didn't utilize our window to really open up the game. So the damage was done prior to that third quarter in your eyes, I imagine, to a degree. Was it frustration in that sense or maybe players not keeping their cool in those moments when maybe some of those balls didn't go their way? Uh, I, actually, the first half, I thought our, the way we had attacked the game was good. Uh, you know, we can all talk about offense and rebounding. Like, we didn't capitalize offensively. We took some uh, questionable shots and the stuff that we feel is important and characteristic to good offense wasn't happening during that period. The third quarter is what you saw of the accumulation of that. And they did a great job of applying foul pressure on us. Um, Defense-wise, how do you sort of see the, the first two games? And I imagine there's probably an element of wanting to tighten that up. Oh, look, we're, we're always trying to get better. Uh, I think uh, as Doolittle gets more comfortable uh, and as we adjust to our personnel, uh, I think our athleticism, our size, gives us great versatility in how we can approach defense. We just didn't have that look last year. And as our staff evolves and what we feel is purposeful for this group, uh, I think we can really climb in the upper echelon in that category. When you talk about that, Team gelling and obviously, you know, do little coming in, you know, just days before yep. you know, the start. How long do you feel or envisage it might take for, for this team to gel? Oh, like I think with who we are as a group, with our youth, with our vets, like we, we can continue to grow throughout the season. Uh, so hopefully I see incremental improvement. Uh, and then now with our roster finalized we can certainly move that uh, Christian this week you can see he's more comfortable out on the floor with all the personnel you look at the fouls this week and see if there's a trend that you need to focus on to, to fix the problem you had especially in the first half the fouls the fouls yeah the number of fouls you were doing. yeah like um you know fouling negates hustle so uh, a lot of them is, comes down to just discipline and making sure we understand the scouting report of who we're playing against. Uh, like example, like their import, we said he what loves to go left. He scored a lot of his points going left. So uh, very correctable, um, you know, so I'm not going to... Friday night's game will be a great way to see if we've learnt from last week. It felt like the whistle was going a lot during the NBA blitz. Harder on everyone across the league. I mean, is that something that everyone has to adjust to? There might be, there might, the might be going a bit more than what they have expected in the past. Oh, like that, it, every year it's always like that at the beginning of the season, no doubt about it. That would be the trend in that. Uh, do you have a clean bill of health for tomorrow? Uh, probably not. 
Uh, Zunich and Webster are still trying to get over their current injuries. Um, probably not, but there's a glimmer of hope. Yeah, Corey was talking to one of the trainers in there, it's his left ankle. Is he, how close is he to playing? Corey? Yeah, is it Corey that's... No, Ty. Ty is like, he's, he's possible, very close. Probably not. Is Corey fit? Yes, yeah. Corey was practicing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought like he was testing his ankle in there just before. So he must have missed the test. shot before. <laughs> uh, what do you expect from Adelaide? Oh, look, they're, they're a, a desperate team. Uh, a lot of swirl around who they are right now. Um, so they're dangerous. Uh, their t first two games in the season so far, Brisbane, they got off to a great start. Melbourne, they competed that whole game. So uh, if we don't come out with a good mindset, like it'll, it'll be a long night. Uh, you spoke about Corey just then, first time he'll take on Isaac Humphrey since obviously the preseason and some, some comments on social media. Do you speak at all to Corey or the team before the game tomorrow night? That was dealt with weeks ago. So on court though, this will be the first time they meet, do you expect you know, a strong showing from Adelaide and United front in terms of that, or do you think it will be, you know, just completely dealt with before the game or anything like that? That's a question for Adelaide. Okay, so do you obviously, you know, you won't talk to Corey or anything about that in the lead up to it? We dealt with that weeks ago. And Corey's in a, a good mind, space and mindset in terms of that? Absolutely. Uh, Bryce. Yeah. It went hard the other day and uh, preventing from getting clean looks, clean yeah. looks at time. Do you approach the yoga going to need to look after him a little bit different ways or anything like that to help him to get the Bryce looks that he has in the past? Yeah, look, that, that's, a, that's a great question. The thing that I, uh, like, which is good, 10 assists. No one's talked about that aspect of his game. You know, so when, when someone has a poor performance scoring wise, how much impact do they have on the game? Still had 10 assists. Now, as a team coach, do we have to find ways could, when teams play him that way to figure that out and make life a little easier for him? Absolutely. But that's where we can see the value in Ty Webster when he's on the floor. I was surprised going about the attention he was getting. It looked from the sidelines like he was getting extra attention. Have you reviewed that and do you feel that he was treated okay? Bryce gets a lot of attention every game. How that is addressed fluctuates. Have you at all spoken with the NBL about that or sought clarity about it? I always ask questions. I'm, I'm here for my players. I want my players to perform at the highest level, so I'm going to do whatever I can to help them. Did you get answers at all in the NBA? I always get a response. Is it res it's a response. Thanks for your, your inquiry, John. And, or was it a, here's a response and you know, we'll be looking at your concerns? I get a response that I live with. Can we expect to see a slightly different Bryce this season? Because it looks like he's got more weapons this year and that he won't necessarily have to put the team on his back every single week. Yep. So should he be judged differently this season in terms of his scoring and actually the fact that he'll have more of a creative role? Yeah, great. that's a great question. Uh, I think we need to evolve as a team so we get a better understanding of what you're asking. Uh, we still need him to be aggressive and assertive and he has to be Bryce Cotton because the gravity that he creates for other guys and like you saw the other night, on Friday night at home, Usher was the recipient. Sometimes that'll be Keanu or Corey or someone else. So we still need Bryce Cotton to be at an MVP level. Uh, now statistically that might look a little different where he has like a 15, 16 assist game and he has 15 points, you know. So I think there is that possibility, but we still need him performing at a very high level and just not taking his abilities for granted. Does it excite you what he could be in, in a different sort of role with everyone focusing on him and distributing his time? I, I actually don't think it's a different role because if teams continue to focus on him and then his teammates can capitalise on that, like it looks like a different role because people are making shots and all of that kind of stuff. So his assists will go up and his points will go down. But his role is still the same on the team. The, um, over the, the shoulders of Ben Henshaw. Yep. Had you seen that at training before? Had you seen anything like that from him before? Yeah, yes, like, like we have a number of players that just play on great feel for the game. And that was just a moment where he 
he performed what the moment required. Uh, you know, so he preseason he threw like a 55 foot alley oop pass to Jordan Usher. That's like a that's a skill that not many people have. So uh, I guess it, like it that looked fancy, and it was a great play. But like he knew what he was doing. It wasn't luck or a fluke or anything like that. Jeez. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you.